Okay, so our next speaker today is uh, Ori Modaev. He's uh, the CTO of Radvision. Uh, Ori has uh, over 10 years of experience in designing and building video conferencing solutions. Uh, he currently serves as uh, the Chief Technology Officer of Radvision, which is a Navaya company, the busiest unit in charge of video conferencing solutions uh, of Avaya. In this role, uh, Ori is responsible for defining and driving the technological vision and roadmap uh, of the video solutions. Ori joined Red Vision in 2003. Through most of his career, he has held the R&D architecture and leadership position, primarily focused on real-time multimedia system and infrastructure. Ori was responsible for several patents and patents application, has been a lead architect of the latest Red Vision Scopia MCU system. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you, Patrick. So uh, today, in the next 25 minutes, I'd like to, stay, to spark up an, a, a thought, an idea. And I'd like all of us to think what would be the next big thing for video on the mobile. Now, while preparing this presentation, I reflected back on about almost 11 years in Radvision. And I remember the, my first interview, or my, basically the last interview in the chain of coming into Radvision with the general manager of the networking business, unit, networking business unit back in the days. He was a big champ, very impressive, very intimidating to somewhat. Uh, and I remember after about half an hour of interrogation that would not uh, confuse a, a, an experienced interrogator from the, the FBI or the Mossad, <laughs> he, he sat me down and he told me, look, you look like a good champ. Let me give you an, a, a, a good tip. I've been around with the video conferencing market for a while and this was 2003. Finally, I can tell you one thing. I smell oil, it's gonna explode like, uh, like the oil, uh, uh, when you hit oil in, in, a, in a new, ref in a new uh, 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 drill, uh, it it's gonna explode and Radvision is going to be at the top of the, of the flow of the new oil coming out of the drill. And you, now is the time to join Radvision. Now, it seems that uh, it worked, the sale pitch worked. Now, I don't know if it was his conviction, his enthusiasm, or the fact that I was too young to tell, but basically 2003, 2004 were indeed amazing, amazing years for the industry. It doesn't flip. Ah, okay. Uh, it's not presenting the right uh, PC. So it was uh, an amazing year uh, 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 for the industry. Great inventions came to life, like the influenza uh, vaccination. Uh, companies were established such as Facebook and, uh, and uh, Skype and, uh, and LinkedIn. And uh, uh, even H.264 was ratified, which was the engine, as we know, for uh, all the video revolution in the next 10 years. But probably, uh, and, and a lot of things happened, but probably one thing didn't happen, and it was there, were no, there was no revolution in video conferencing. When I stepped into the meeting room, I saw the same set of box systems, no disrespect to the systems, we manufactured such system back in the day. But it's, it was a white glove service, standard definition, not too exciting, somewhat dusty because people were confused or, or challenged by using that. And the revolution, as most of the industry veterans here in the room, and there are many of you here, the revolution came about three years after when a few companies realized uh, uh, the potential in the technology and, bring, and brought it to service uh, by rolling out high definition services. That was the, the spark that, that exploded the market from $1 billion to $3 billion. Now, why, why am I telling you this entire story? I find the fact that our market, at least the video conferencing part of it, since 2012, 2013 has gone into a plateau and again, we are looking for, essentially, all of us vendors here in the room are looking for the, the next spark that will take this market and, and together with UC, which probably, as we can see, VC and UC are, are converging, of course, will take it and, and bring it to the next uh, big jump. And that is for, uh, at least in my humble opinion and, and uh, many uh, uh, market an analysts' uh, opinion, that will be driven by mobile and desktop uh, deployments. So the big question I, I, I wanted to challenge myself was, why video and why more mobile? It can be mobile and not video. It can be video, not on the mobile. So let's look at some statistics. First of all, video is happening in enterprises all, all over. If you look at, at the research from the Mertis from the beginning of this year, 
Uh, about uh, 40% of the enterprises, 48% uh, of the enterprises deployed video conferencing to about 28 to 30% of the employees. About 40% of the employees spend 20% a time away from their desktop, being mobile. I remember the Microsoft uh, uh, keynote speaker uh, before me uh, saying that this is true. We are work walking from one office to the other, uh, working from home. We use video on the mobile, then on the desktop, then, then on the VTC system when we want to have a board meeting. Then go going back to the room, we take another call or another uh, chat message. We're doing that continuously throughout the day. You see it's growing rapidly. And about 80% of Fortune 100 companies deploy iPhone and iPad in what we dreadfully say, bring your own device. I heard uh, during the last two days in the board meeting, there's a new policy, buy your own laptop in the, in the enterprises. The, the IT is all fed up with us and all our, I want a Mac and I want a PC, I want it to be slim and thin, uh, that they, they, they simply give us the budget and, and figure it out on your own. And 71% uh, and back in that research expect to, to uh, increase their deployment of desktop and mobile. So it's happening on the enterprise. If we look at, at some figures, everyone are going mobile. Commuting yesterday from, from the board meeting to the dinner and then doing uh, three miles over half an hour uh, uh, got me figuring out why people are telecommuting these days. And if we, if we look at the US Labor Department the figures, it's happening all over. So it's, a, it's about one to five people uh, do at least one day out of home telecommuting. 10% of the US employees consider, are considered old warriors, doing most of their work outside the office. And about one out of 20 people work from home 100% or consider home as their main working workplace. And the Generation Y, what's famous, famously tagged as Generation Y, is now hitting the, hitting the enterprise, hitting the, the companies. And, uh, and we are becoming digital natives as well, even if we are what, 10 to 20 years in the business already. And probably if I ask you all, what's more disturbing about the, the left picture, the fact that it's a fetus holding a phone, or the fact that the phone is a Blackberry, I, I believe at least 50% of you guys would figure out it's a, the fact that it's a Blackberry and not the fact that it's a, it's a fetus holding a phone. So this, this, this by itself indicates some of our, uh, our uh, way of thinking. Now video is a huge part of it. We've seen uh, from uh, the colleague from Google indicate, uh, showing an analysis of, of, of what's going on on the internet. There are many, many researchers, all uh, research done, and uh, all of them indicating that video is a huge part of all the bandwidth and all the data being transferred between PCs and desktop and, and mobile and servers all around the world. Just to give you an idea, Netflix is about 30% of US traffic in the peak hours. 15 years of video are being watched on YouTube every minute. So an equivalent of 15 years. It was, I started off, it was in minutes, but it was such a long number. I said, okay, let's translate that to something we can quantify. And about 63% of digital, digital video screening uh, uh, is uh, done at home, is done over the mobile, which is quite amazing because the first thing I do when I come to home, to my house, is turn on the TV. Now, it's, it, it seems to be that most of the things we do is watch video in our house from our mobile. And if you look at, uh, at least in Israel, where I come from, when you, look, when you read the newspaper, every second article is a video article. It's, it's a, a person in a, in a studio being photographed and streaming out to the guys instead of, you don't have the patience to read the, all these details. Let me tell you the, that more efficiently. So it's happening all over, and it's video and it's mobile. And probably the last number, I, I, I was spending about good, one, one hour trying to figure out some statistics on, on visual communication on the consumer side. Luckily, our friends from Microsoft exposed last year some statistics on what's going on on Skype, and it's, an, it's amazing numbers. It's three billion plus video minutes per day done by around 300 million users. And st statistics from 2012 from Skype before the, the Microsoft acquisition indicate about 40% of Skype calls uh, uh, are done with video. And if I, I, and I assume if I ask you all, uh, uh, did you made a, a video, uh, did you use video since you got here, probably at least 50% of the people in the room 
would raise their hand. I'm using video every day to, to have a conversation with my kids when I'm here. So it's happening, it's happening on the mobile, and it's, it's, video is a huge part of it. So let's discuss briefly what would be the main video, the main potential drivers for the big jump on mobile video. So the first thing that I wanted to uh, bring to, to the table is multi-screen experience. What's it typically called multi-screen experience? So on the video market, and I'll give you the, the video conferencing angle of it. So basically, traditionally, when you said video in the enterprise, you, you thought, OK, desktop video is small, 240p, 360p kind of pixelated video. Video conferencing system is full HD, high quality audio, nice tables, uh, opportunity to meet the guys around the, over for a coffee and do a meeting. Now, nowadays, during the last two years or something like that, there is an inversion of experience. So the meeting room experience is, is becoming somewhat limited comparing to what you can get from unified communication or video conferencing systems, personal mobile, uh, personal communication systems on your mobile or on your desktop. You, you can get control, personalized experience, collaboration, things that are very, very difficult to do on a, on a shared system. It's personalized experience. And this, dri this is driving the inversion, basically. So what, what traditionally you can do and, and enjoy the qualities on the meeting room, you can do much more stuff on the, on the mobile uh, uh, side. And uh, probably what is going to bridge the gap is what is called or referred to as the multi-screen experience. Now, I'll give you a very short clip coming from a research done in the UK about the future of television. Very interesting, uh, uh, by the way, series that you should watch called 2020 Vision. I think that people prophesy the death of television too easily and too quickly. When you look at the history of mass media, no mass medium has ever been replaced by another. They've continued to exist alongside each other. It was 10 years ago we all read that that internet was going to kill television. And in fact, what we see now is TV and the internet working together. People are watching more television than ever before, but they're doing it differently. It might seem like a paradox to hear that the consumption of television is increasing even as all sorts of other platforms, both mobile platforms and social media and the web in general, have started to take off in great numbers. The question you might ask is, where are people finding the time to do all of this? Well, the fact is they're multitasking. The older generation are passing on to a newer generation that's very IT savvy and very interactive, uh, who want to make perhaps multitask, who want to send emails on Facebook or Twitter while they're watching. So that two screen experience is another way for them to be participatory and do something. In the US around, every household has on average 32 different consumer electronic devices. And we're expecting about 25 million tablets to be sold this year. So the consumer appetite for devices is growing quite rapidly. Video on the go, wherever you are, whether it be at the office, on the tube, on the train home, in the bus, in the back seat of a car, you can consume content everywhere. It's not just that you can choose what you want to watch, when you want to watch it. It's not just that you can choose what platform you want to watch it on. But you can also choose to watch it in greater or smaller slices. So the key here on multi-screen multi experience is to combine your mobile device, bring your own device experience that we are all familiar with and accustomed and, and, and are very easy to control and, and, and combine that with the group experience and delivering what's, what the best experience that you can get on the group experience that high, high quality video, that uh, high quality audio, that uh, ability to interact physically with people while allowing you to maintain your personal experience and allow you to consume additional uh, uh, modalities of data. Some few examples of things that, that can, imp can be impacted by multi-screen experience in the video conferencing market. Things like connectivity, which was number one issue with, with video conferencing systems. Things like control, personalized experience, all of them can be bridged by the mere fact that everyone can bring their own device into the meeting room and interact together. And the key is to create a context. So essentially, through ease of use, through different technologies, to interconnect and automatically shift the mobile to the context of the room and vice versa. Now, the key question that our organization need to consider is what about interoperability? Because every, every vendor of TV, 
and every video conferencing vendor is working on some sort of this multi-stream experience, but essentially these are all siloed. And we need to consider how we can open up and allow different devices, different vendors, or, pe or one person coming and, and being hosted on, on another company, bring his own device, his own application, and interact. So this is a great question. Definitely we'll see this more and more coming to play in a communication in, the, in, the, in our market. The second thing we should consider is business to consumer relationship. And let me do a quick poll. What is the first word that comes to mind when we consider business to consumer relationship in this forum? Who thinks about WebRTC? Probably 80% of us think about WebRTC. That's the big promise. That's a big goal. And during the last two days in the board meeting, uh, I heard the, the, the best analogy or, or, or a concept of what is uh, WebRTC all about. It's all about enabling 13-year-old uh, uh, kid in, in some garage somewhere to develop a call center application and allow, a, and allow very easy click-to-call communication into a, into a server system. But WebRTC uh, only delivers a tool, and it's up to the companies, basically, to leverage this tool and create an experience, or create an end-to-end -end experience. And when, I, uh, and when I talk about experience, again, I talk about context. And just to give you an idea of, what, of, of a use case, let's watch Susan has a new refrigerator that looks great in her kitchen and has the features she's always wanted. But it's been installed and running for hours now, and the freezer compartment still hasn't frozen. So, as she's completing the product registration online, Susan notices that there's a click-to-call option and decides to get some answers right away. Because she started at the registration page, all of Susan's information now travels with her call, including the make and model of the refrigerator and her problem with the freezer compartment. This information makes it possible to assign Susan's call to the right person, in this case, to Gary the product specialist for that line of refrigerators. So essentially the idea of not only to be able to connect using a, a browser and, and coding to, the, to our friend from Google, probably starting next year with your Android device, to connect directly to the call center, but be able to understand what's the problem when you click to call. What's the problem? What's the context? What did you buy? Who are you? And, and feed this all up and, and shorten the, the connectivity time and the, and the queuing time and deliver the best uh, possible service very quickly. This is probably the, the wrapping around WebRTC or the enablement around the WebRTC that we'll need to, to sort out. But definitely WebRTC will have to come to play in, in the mobile space and, and will include uh, all the modalities that we are familiar with and being, being able to a, a play a video from the, using WebRTC, play, a, play the backward, the back facing camera of the phone, allowing you to show the, the technician back in the call center what you are using, what's the, exactly the problem, and, and, and allow him or enable him to give you the right answer very quickly. So that, this is the key around WebRTC. Now, this is a technological forum. Everyone here does technology, but my main goal is Guys, we need to, to open up and, and think what the end users are doing with our technology, with our capabilities, or with the capabilities that we're putting into the products. That is the main, the main thing we need to consider in my perspective. So we are, we are all familiar, with, this is a, a chart by Cisco uh, predicting the, the traffic over the internet, showing that uh, video is probably 50% or more since 2013. And we saw a very similar uh, data coming from uh, our friends from Google. But basically, we know the problem. Video is, is major traffic over the internet. We need to figure this out and, and shrink this as much as we can to open up space to more video that will come. But we need to open up uh, our thoughts and, and consider the, the, the different bandwidth modalities so, uh, or the, the availability of bandwidth. And if we compare the prices of bandwidth, uh, 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 comparing MPLS lines, and, and we had a lot of conversations around quality of experience and quality of service over uh, uh, UC networks. Guys, MPLS has reached a sort of resistance kind of uh, level where the prices will not go down dr dramatically. While if you look at different OECD uh, uh, research uh, work done over year over year, you see that public internet is, is, uh, is growing up all over the world. 
and at the same price, very modest price to the end consumer, you get more and more bandwidth every year. And we should consider end-to-end -end beyond the fact that we, we've discussed this as part of the SDN discussions, but we need to consider end-to-end -end how can we deliver the best experience over these networks. And this all has to do about connectivity everywhere of our traversal, not traversal, and all of that. And most, more importantly, a, a resiliency over any network. But it's not enough to speak about things like uh, Codex and all of that, just to give an idea about the power of the trend. Codex are uh, the, discu the discussion level of, of us technicians, us technical guys, engineers. The, the usability, the features, augmented reality, Ultra HD are things that are exposed and deliver actual value to the end user, things that the end user is more interested about. And you, and you can see even the trend from Google Trends, how many people ask questions, qu uh, inquiries about uh, usage, rather uh, about technology. And so let's explore a few technologies. Just a second. So let's explore a few technologies uh, that I believe will uh, rattle the mobile world. Let's start with augmented reality. This is a piece from Google Glass. Oh, Glass cool. Google. Take a photo of this. Share it to my circles. Oh, I'm running late. Music, stop. Hi, what's up? Hey. Hey. You want to say something cool? Yeah, sure. Is that a ukulele? Yep. Okay, here goes. So, <laughs> this is a demo inspirational movie Beautiful. coming from Google indicating some usage. <laughs> I, I chose only the part of the visual communication out of a very nice clip, by the way. I recommend you all to go to the link. There is a link in the presentation itself to go to the link and, and, and open up and think, what would augmented reality, for instance, do to our everyday usage? Definitely, there is a way to go, but these are the kind of stuff that people will be looking for in the next couple of years. Now, ever since a Minority Report hit the market 2006, I've been driven to be able to wave off my AC system, my stereo, even to my wife, and have, it, have them all interact. But, uh, uh, and we are all familiar with natural user, and natural user interfaces, probably the most prominent service coming from Siri and the, the equivalent one coming from, uh, in the Android world, is a good example of how simple and personalized the uh, experience can, be, can become when we activate natural user experience. Let's look at, the, uh, so we know all about voice usage, let's think about video, and let's start by looking at a few problems with voice control. Can you find me a plumber? Mobile. Who is the British Prime Minister? Sorry, I don't understand. Is the breath Prime Minister? Where is the nearest lavatory? Sorry, I can only look for businesses in the United States. Call me an ambulance. <laughs> I don't know who you are, but you can tell me. Yeah. When does this meeting end? I don't understand. When does this meeting end? No, I don't have 25 meetings today at 4.50 p.m. When does this meeting end? I don't understand. Is the pen mightier than the sword? I can only look for businesses in the United States. Should I buy a new iPhone? I can only look for businesses in the United States, and when you're using US English, sorry about that. So, we are familiar with, with usage, and this is with the English accent. I would imagine how it will poorly perform when it uh, tries to handle Israeli English. But essentially, but essentially uh, uh, there are many, many companies, by the way, many in Israel, that are looking to, to see how can we control the world using gesture and using hand waves and, and eye contact. And I'll give you one uh, inspirational video that is, look, uh, that is coming from an Israeli company called Point Grab.
So they have, some, they have some work to do to reach this kind of level, but, but controlling fruit gesture is something that uh, uh, if someone is interested in, there are many, many startups and companies that have very impressive capabilities. And this, this is something that can be activated in a public space, not only talking with your own personal Siri, but rather you can do it and through eye gesture through eye gaze and, uh, and eye, eye contact and, uh, and proper and very advanced gesture analysis, one can deter, or the device can determine whether you're controlling it and, and figure out what you're doing. Probably the most intriguing and, and, and interesting and, and difficult th aspect of it would be to figure out gestures that would make sense to all of us. So just to summarize, video is going to happen on the mobile, it's quite clear. There are a lot, a lot of opportunities, such as uh, 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 delivering a contextual multi-screen experience uh, through multiple devices, delivering uh, uh, augmented views, rich metadata, and reaching the world that in, in our perspective, and uh, natural user interfaces. I'd like us all to think about interoperability, device-to-device -device communication, and most importantly, privacy and security. Thank you.